Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the all new channel 2012. In recent weeks I found myself the owner of a HP 2000 laptop with a broken LCD screen. Today's video I'm going to be going kind of stepping through with you guys what I did to fix that here in the video. Uh, first thing you'll obviously need to do is order a new LCD screen. Uh, those can be found on eBay for around $54. I got the one I going to be replacing here for about $54 shipped. Anyway, let's dive right in. First step you want to look at is removing the optical drive. And uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can uh, see in the video what I'm doing there, but we'll uh, go over a few other things that'll help you uh, perform this repair better. First thing that'll really help out is the HP repair guide, the service guide, and that I will be referring to back to here in the video. You can probably find a download link to that in the resources section of the video description. Another thing that'll help is probably a table and a place to put your uh, screws, a tray like you can see on the right there in the video. As you can see already, I've removed the battery in those two panels. I've left the screws in the panels and uh, we'll actually be removing the optical drive. Now as you can see, you just remove one screw and pull out the drive as it's visible in the picture there. For now, I'm just going to put the screw back into the, the hole in the drive. Step two, you, I found that this is actually optional, but the repair guide does recommend removing the uh, Wi-Fi card that's already in there. That's simply a matter of removing one screw, pulling out the antenna, and then the card just pops out just like a stick of uh, laptop RAM would. I also used the card to keep track of the screw for that as well. Step three, you will need to remove the keyboard that's in the laptop. Uh, there's also a picture in the repair service guide that can help you with this. You just remove one screw, and then uh, this next part can get kind of dicey, so watch closely. You'll want to use uh, something pointy. In this case, I had a pointy extension for the screwdriver. You want to hold the laptop up on its side and then in the screw hole where you remove the keyboard screw from you just want to push on that until one or two of the clips for the keyboard pops out and as you can see there I'm able to get most of that and then it can just be pulled out by hand from there you just kind of flip it over set it on the palm rest and then flip up the thing that's holding the ribbon cable pull that out and then set the keyboard off to the side. You can also use the hole there to keep track of the screw for the keyboard so you don't have to use up slots in your screw tray for that. Step four is removing the top cover, that is the palm rest. Uh, and this is probably where the, the real meat of the disassembly starts to take place. Uh, you can see here I've got a picture from the service guide uh, with the screws that you need to remove. Uh, in the video that you see in the corner now I'm actually removing the screws holding in the hard drive even though the guide doesn't say you need to remove the hard drive you do need to remove it because there are screws holding in the palm rest underneath it after you've got those then there's a handful more screws here that need to be removed in order to unsnap the palm rest if I'm going too fast remember you can watch the service guide. I've got a PDF link to that again in the resources section of the video description. After you've got all those screws removed, which you can actually put in the same slot, you got a few more screws here. The ones marked 1 are actually a little longer and the ones marked 2 are uh, significantly smaller than the ones we've looked at so far, so those can all go in the uh, next slot up on the screw tray. Before we take the palm rest off, let's just go ahead and unsnap the ZIF connectors that are uh, plugged in for the power button and the trackpad. On mine, there are three of those. And then before you remove it, there is one more screw that needs to be undone, and that can just go back in the first tray. From here, then, it's just kind of a tricky matter of unsnapping the palm rest, starting in the top corners. Just be careful and patient with this and it should uh, start to come right out. After you get a few of the snaps done, it'll go really quick. You'll find it's also the majority of the weight of the base of the computer, so after you've removed it, 
the LCD will actually weigh more than the base, so you'll just need to hold it down. Now we're going to actually remove the LCD assembly from the base of the computer. We'll start with the left side because it's a little more tricky. You'll find that there are, uh, on this side, the speaker is kind of in the way, so there's a couple screws and stuff that need to be removed within the speaker. This you'll actually be able to see better in person than you can in either the service guide or the video. In fact, the presence of this speaker isn't even mentioned in the service guide at all. You also want to take this time to undo the connector from the display. It's snapped in and kind of glued down. And at this point, you can see I'm trying to remove that speaker, but there's actually one more hidden screw kind of off to the left holding that in place there. So we're going to go ahead and undo that. From there, the speaker kind of slides out, and then it looks like there may or may not be one more screw holding that whole thing down there. You just kind of got to remember how those were all put in there and in what order. It's a lot easier in person than it is to explain in the video. On the right side, the setup is somewhat similar, although you actually do not have the speakers to contend with. There's just a two or three screws holding things down there. That's pretty straightforward. After that's done, you'll find that both of those just come right up, and then you can lay the LCD down flat behind the laptop. Next thing we're going to do, we're actually dive into replacing the LCD. You'll find that that uh, it's not totally free from the base because there's that wireless antenna. I chose to leave it in there. What you want to do is remove those little uh, stickers in the corners, like it was in the picture there, and then remove the screws that are underneath those. Remember which side they go on, and remember to keep track of the screws so that you can put them back later. Next, you can actually remove the frame around the LCD. You just want to stick your thumbs into the, uh, the inside of the top, and then you'll go from the top down the sides, and eventually you'll be able to unsnap the bottom, and the whole frame will just come off. It's a pretty flimsy little plastic piece, as you can see there. Next, I'm going to remove the hinge covers. Each is held in by one screw. Remember which side they go in. Finally, there are six remaining screws holding in the LCD frame thing. Two on the top and four on the bottom. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Now the entire uh, LCD panel is free from that frame. Depending on what model you have, the webcam cable may also be stuck to the monitor. In my case, it's not. So all I have to do is remove the carefully remove the cable that carries the video to the display itself. It's held in with some tape, and then you can just kind of leave it hanging there. Next, I'm going to remove some screws holding in the frames down on the sides there. And with that, the LCD is free from the base. You can see why it was broken the way it was. And here's the new LCD. It looks a lot like the old one. Samsung all still wrapped up there. We're going to go ahead and remove the wrapper. I'm going to leave the cover on the monitor for now as long as I can so that I don't get uh, fingerprints on there. We're going to go ahead and put those little frame pieces back on, plug the monitor cable back in, tape it back down, same as it was before. We're going to put that whole thing back into the base. From here, it's just a matter of reattaching those six screws that hold it into the, the back plate. And then we got the hinge covers again. We'll pop those back on and screw them back in as well. And now I'm going to remove that cover. Interestingly, my replacement screen was a matte finish instead of a glossy one, which I actually prefer. I think it looks better. Next we're going to snap the frame back in, and even though I didn't do it yet at this stage in the video, now would be a great time to also put those little corner screws and stickers back in. Then you just want to line the hinges back up with the case again, and they screw in the same way. Then perform the reassembly process up until you've got the power button plugged in, and then just make sure that your display works and it appears that we have a working system here. 
From there, the reassembly process is just about the same as, I'm sorry, the reverse of the disassembly process. So that's all you got to do to get that working again. Even though the video was only 10 minutes, the process actually took somewhere in the neighborhood of close to an hour. And there's different variables. In my case, there was a, um, a one of those frame pieces was cracked, so I had to glue that. So, you know, always uh, make time for the unexpected. Other than that, it was a pretty straightforward process in the two of these that I've done so far. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.